brains, as I pointed out in my CB nomination. Shut up, Niles. Or air. Okay. Okay. Job in New York. Well, you know, some targets that were hit. Hard at work, I see. Yeah, up to my elbows. Could be tall. Medical examiner Hirsch is um... at Jamie's own request. Jamie asked Steve to sign a contract promising to do whatever it took to stop him from overeating. And I quote, no matter how much I protest. You see, Your Honor, Jamie knew there would come a time when his will would weaken and he would want Steve to stop. So now Steve follows his instructions not to stop, and Jamie sues him. Doesn't make any sense. Mr. Stevens. Your Honor, it's not the restraining order that's invalid. It's the so-called contract. When Jamie asked Steve to help him lose weight, he never imagined that Steve would take things as far as he did. Destruction of valuable personal property, public humiliation, surely the law cannot protect this type of behavior. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. We'll begin with witnesses tomorrow morning. In the meantime, Mr. Masters, don't forget that there's still a restraining order with your name on it. Yes, Your Honor. Ah. Should I get the kind for sensitive skin or the kind for super sensitive skin? Since when do you need to shave? And Kevin, you haven't even hit puberty yet. Look like a newborn brine shrimp. <laughs> hey, Warren. Hey, don't forget these. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Mark, I'm not gonna need condoms. I'm just going to the movies. Besides, my mom shops here, so can you get rid of those? These are the kind that Jeff Goldblum uses. I read it in Esquire. <sighs> hey. Big weekend. Mm. I need a price check over here. Hi, no. How, How much, much is, is the ultra shave gel? <laughs> it's cheap. Steve, Mr. Samuel. Hey, Lewis, Toby, knock it off over there. Mr. Stevens, what is the purpose of this meeting? My client wishes to settle this case. No way, no how. Steve, you should listen to what we have to say. I can guarantee you're not going to win in court. We're brothers. We don't belong in a court of law. I mean, how crazy is this? Look, I'm willing to forget about the money and the damages if you'll just agree to stop harassing me. You can't win, Steve. There's no way the judge will uphold this contract. Will you boys excuse us for a moment? I need to talk to my brother. He's right. I'm probably gonna lose in court. But lucky for me, we ain't going back to court. What do you mean? I bought myself a little insurance policy. A 30 second commercial on tomorrow night's local news. If you don't drop this case and let me keep helping you lose weight, the whole town's gonna see this. What is it? I'll see you later, Jamie. So, do you have a VCR in your office? Come on. You sure you don't want to watch this yourself? No, nah, you're my lawyer. Plus, I don't have any skeletons in the closet. I got reindings in the pantry, but no skeletons in the closet. It's my house. It's me. I... Yeah. This is Jamie Masters. If you see him on the street, call him a fat pig. He's gonna run this on TV? Thank you. If he does that, we'll sue him. We're already suing him! If he runs this on TV, I'll be the laughing stock of the community. We, we gotta drop the case! We can't do that, Jamie. This is blackmail. If you let him get away with this, it'll just get worse. Trust me, we'll deal with this in court.
Now we really need to start focusing on party favors. You know, little keepsake knick-knack for your guests to take home. Oh, I don't think we need that. Of course you do. Now my cousin Gilles can engrave absolutely anything. He wants to put a bride's initials on a cocker spaniel's ass. The man's an artist, and I will give him a holler. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, Barbara. Hi there. Hey, Ari. <laughs> guys, we've got some bad news. What's that? Colonel Sanders can't be our best man. No. Really? He died in 1980. Oh, mm. gosh. Did they send us a coupon for free honey barbecue wings? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, you guys. No. I, I don't mean to sound like a broken record on the subject, but I'm just not certain you're taking this whole thing seriously enough. Sure, Ed. We could hold off for a while. Maybe in a way that's the wise thing to do. But I feel like for whatever reason, We've been given this magic moment. And I don't want to just sit around being wise until that moment passes. Yeah, but if the magic were to pass that quickly, then maybe you shouldn't be getting married. I think you're missing my point. Look, Ed, if you want us to have our wedding somewhere else, just tell us. No, look, Ari, it's not that I want you to get married somewhere. Don't be ridiculous. Be don't be ridiculous. Of course you're getting married here. And you know what? It's going to be the greatest bowling alley wedding ever. <sighs> Thanks, guys. Oh. <laughs> you there you go. Bye. All right, take it easy. Bye now. What are you doing? If they're going to get married, they may as well get married here. Carol, what chance do you really think this has of working out? About as good a chance as any marriage. Maybe better. Look at them. Oh. Yeah, I know, but I just think that they should... Maybe it'll work out. Maybe it won't. Who knows? Things go wrong for all kinds of reasons. But who are we to stand in the way of something that is so obviously meant to be? Well, I don't think they should split up. I just think they should wait. Yeah, well, waiting has its own set of problems. What if they start thinking too much? What if they start second-guessing everything? There is such a thing as being too cautious, isn't there? One man who truly knows that it's a jungle out there. Right. And fear is the instinct that keeps him alive. They scared the living daylights right out of me. He loves animals that bite, sting or scratch. Uh, Steve's first to get into it. Steve's loved by millions around the world. Let's follow him. Now, the undisputed king of khaki is here. Crikey, it was dangerous. The Crocodile Hunter. Premier 6.30 Sunday on 10. They hate us, you know. The humans. We it was America's first major golf invention. Such as Germany and Argentina host some of football's great... We all need to take a leaf out of... Well, folks, check out that million-dollar view over Sydney... about threats still wasn't enough to bring charges. Investigators had to place her in the room with the smoking gun. Sick people well again, which is what we are doing here. Since you're back, have you made any sparkling wine? I've got a couple of... Do that. Charming board the ill-fated flights. Authorities say they've already identified one of the suspected hijackers from a passenger list from one of the jets that went down. They're now hunting down some members of bin Laden's al-Qaeda revolutionary group based in Florida. What about Osama bin Laden? Do you suspect him as the prime suspect in this? Um, it's, it's, it's not the time for discussions like that. U.S. intelligence agencies were expecting a strike by bin Laden, but they didn't think it would be on American soil. They thought he was focusing on a plot to assassinate the Afghan opposition commander Ahmad Shad Massoud. But it now appears the CIA and FBI ignored two clear warnings in recent days. Only three weeks ago, bin Laden went on Middle East television warning of a huge and unprecedented attack against the United States. And in June, he released a video telling his supporters that he would soon penetrate the US and hit it where it hurts most. There are 
The fugitive Saudi millionaire is America's most wanted man, with a $5 million price tag on his head. He has been public enemy number one since he was blamed for a bomb attack on the World Trade Center eight years ago. The 44-year-old has used his family wealth to set up his revolutionary organization, Al-Qaeda, or the base. Three years ago, the group bombed two U.S. embassies in Africa, killing more than 250 people. It's also suspected of being behind last year's bombing of the USS Cole in Yemen, in which 17 sailors were killed and 38 injured. The American government has spent millions of uh, fire department that I've appointed. That have been recovered by the chief medical. <laughs> do, you, do you enjoy going to the cinema? Yes, Warren, I enjoy going to the cinema. <laughs> Me too. I also like going to the movies. Ah. Hi. Ah. Touche. Hey. Touche. Warren, you don't need to be nervous around me. Okay. Oh. Hello, welcome to Park Theater. What can I get for you today? Uh, we'd like two medium sodas and two small popcorns, please. This is a small. It's a small? Mm -hmm. Tiny. Okay, well, we'll take two mediums then. For a dollar less, you get the large. All right, we'll, we'll have the large popcorn and two medium sodas then. You gotta make one of the sodas a large to get the combo. Okay, like, we can't eat that much popcorn and drink that much soda, you understand that? But the love of God, no one can. You see these two containers right here? Yeah. These right here represent your best value. If you want to buy 32 of these little guys, be my guest. Go ahead. I'm just trying to protect you from yourself. Do you, do you even want popcorn? No, okay, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll take this. Whatever, here, just take this. Thanks. That's expensive. All right, you go ahead. Yeah. Thanks. All right. I think Jessica Martel likes you, you know. What? <laughs> no way, that's... No, I'm serious. I saw the way she's looking at you during group projects. No way, that's... Really? Yeah. No. No, I'm telling you. Well, I'm not here with Jessica Martel. I'm here with Donna Tosby. So. Thank you. You know, Donna... A woman is like a flower. You have to feed her and water her or else... Ah! Oh. oh, God. Oh, man. I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, it's cool, it's cool. Hey, a sneaker caught in the escalator. Uh, foot, foot caught in the escalator. Excuse me. Excuse me, could you... Uh, excuse me, could you stop? Okay, excuse me. Okay, 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 don't move, okay? okay? Don't go anywhere. All right. Could you tell the manager to turn off? The escalator has my... It's gonna eat my foot. That's cool, though. That's cool. No, I walk on by. Hey, have a good night. Let me just go on the escalator. We come here today to honor Barbara and Ari in this blessed event. It is well, hold on, hold on! Heck, you can't have a wedding without a best man. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. You guys screw this marriage up? I'll have to hunt you down and kill you. We won't. I know you won't. The queen of the best, best and yeah. Set hand to racing wins a.
talk out there, some rumors in the market that there have been some restrictions placed on borrowing of... Azar, can you tell us what you are hearing on the ground? Well, Grace, what you are... At this point that we, that we know of, uh, and the, the reality is that we have looked first and then given practice in flying aircraft by someone... We've got to bring the world together. Colin Powell, who's going to be with us uh, very shortly, says uh, we're... The presence of a fellow named Bobby Jones. The Arab Afghans, I mean, during... Do a thing, you know. And if you only know the one song, well, somebody might sing it before you. <laughs> and that's you. Thrilling display of pageantry and. Grace, Cassie. Love to hide their bellies. And throw it in the wine. So uh, today we just. <laughs> Bush sent photographs of the Carla Brown murder scene to Campbell for. What we to do is get the sharks to feed on our terms. We want them to come in at the right angle, at the right height, so that way we don't get bitten and the sharks, you know, learn that that's the proper feeding position. It becomes a dangerous game of cat and mouse while the sharks learn the rules. Time and time again, food is offered and then taken away. I felt that this guy would have to pull all of his teeth out, at least most. Dare to experience. Uh, in Arabic were found in a national rent-a-car um, that was at the central parking area at Logan Airport. Uh, the car had been rented uh, by two, uh, by one man, um, and by going through the manifest, they've identified five names. Two of them are brothers. One of them is a pilot. Um, that they're focusing on, uh, and it appears to be a different pilot from the man in Florida. So it looks like there were a number of people, uh, two or more, who had uh, in-flight experience and who may have trained others. And does it surprise you they left this kind of evidence behind? Uh, in a suicide mission, um, I'm sure being traced or caught was probably not their concern. <laughs> you know, there's an ironic detail that they got to the Logan Airport so late that their luggage didn't make the plane. I can't imagine that's of much concern. Well, it's interesting uh, because in most carriers, uh, there's a system of passenger claiming where, um, uh, it's the, where the opposite is true. If your luggage makes the plane and you right. don't, it, it doesn't take off. Uh, the opposite doesn't apply, though. Yeah. All right, John Miller, Brian Ross, uh, thanks very much. Greetings, greetings, beauty seekers. This is the program that's going to tell you everything you need to know about making stunning arrangements with your flowers and plants. He had come to receive the city's greatest honor.
Arabic language flight manual in the rental car that the men left at the airport. They've towed that car away and they have also, the passenger manifest is also... You know, as far as I know, they're alive. Let me ask you about... Well, I would more people that survived in that void. You saw it. Oh, absolutely. I didn't see the void, but, uh, you know, any void down there, there's a lot of potential for people to survive, especially underneath the uh, the first floor of the building. It goes down five or six stories uh, with the train platform and things. And that, there could be a lot of survivors. So tell me how many hours you've been there. Uh, I've been here since uh, noon yesterday, so I don't know what time it is now, but... Okay, so we're talking about right now, 18 hours you've been there. Yeah. What is... There's an emergency vehicle, so we're going to get out of the way so we don't get run over here. Let me ask you, what is the scene like right there? Because we can't get right next to the building. We're a couple of blocks away from it right now. It's just absolute devastation. It's just uh, steel and rubble all over the place. Uh, there's about four or five inches of concrete ash. You really can't discern shapes or anything. It's just uh, it's just piles of garbage, and that's that's what they're uh, they're using the cranes right now to pull up as much as they can and, and try and dig their way in and try and find one of these voids I was talking about where maybe we can find more people. It's painful to talk about, sir, but have you seen victims, people who perished in this? Uh, no, I haven't. There, there were, there are scattered bodies around. I haven't seen any. We haven't gotten to any that I've seen yet, but I know of some that have been taken out. And psychologically, how are you handling this? Well, it's very tough. I, I have a lot of friends that I know uh, were working yesterday, and they were up in that building yesterday. And uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure they, they perished in the building yesterday. And I'm, I'm sure as more news comes out, there'll be more and more people I, that I know that, that died, uh, both for the fire department, police department, and that worked in, in the Twin Towers. And you were helping out with the rescue? I just came in today because, uh, you know, I was born and raised in New York. And uh, I want to I do my, my bit, you know, uh, I mean... The, you should see this. This, this, this is this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. It's almost it's it's, it's almost like like there was a war there. I saw uh, fire trucks turned over. Um, I saw one building that part of the World Trade Center uh, fell. Uh, uh, part of it fell on it. It's destroyed. All the building. I think the financial center. They're gonna have to take it down because it's all messed up. So what were you using to dig through the rubble? We were using buckets. Uh, uh, we were using buckets because uh, if there are bodies there, there, if there's people alive, then, you know, the crane just could pick them up and kill them. So we were using buckets to take out all the rubbish. And then uh, a couple of times, they would give us bits and pieces of the World Trade Center. You know, the metal part, remember the metal part in front of it? We were, we were bringing pieces out like that. Carmelo, just how high are these mountains of rubble? They were as high as, as, as seven stories. It was left of the World Trade Center. Was there any indication whether or not anyone was alive underneath the rubble where you were? Uh, no, I did not see any people alive in the rubble. They took a piece of a chunk of a body out. I saw that. But rescuers are still hopeful they'll find someone alive. They might be, but I didn't hear anybody. You know, uh, they got a lot of firefighters going into the buildings there, checking out, you know, uh, if there are people alive. But in the World Trade Center itself, it doesn't look like there's anybody alive. I mean, you should see that. It's all messed up. I ain't never seen nothing like that. So the day after, what's the general mood of New Yorkers? The, ne the general mood is everybody is talking about it. They can't believe that that really happened. But uh, I ain't never seen New York as united as today. There was black people there. There was firefighters. There was police officers. They got women over here doing uh, volunteer work. And as a volunteer, I can see that they've given you helmets and other equipment? Yeah, this is the helmet that they, as you can see, they even, they even put a number here. As you can see, this number here, this is my name, this is my phone number, and this is my number in case I get trapped off or I get killed, uh, you know, because that place is very dangerous to work in. I mean, um, you really gotta love New York to go over there because it's very, very dangerous, and there is still fire there. Now, you've lived in New York all your life, haven't you? I was born and raised here, and I'll tell you the truth, it touched my heart. And I expressively got up this morning to go over there to help out. And what I saw was, was tragic. This, if the United States doesn't do anything about this, they'll do it again. Because this is the worst thing I've ever seen. It was like a bomb dropped right there. Okay, I know it's been difficult and we appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Michael.
And while we all pray the rescuers will have more luck tomorrow. Are out now, although there still are a few hot spots for them uh, to deal with occasionally. Uh, workers are shoring up the building as needed so that they can move further into the rubble. Uh, they are looking for bodies, and they say they do not believe that there are any survivors to be found. Uh, the estimated death toll here now is around 200, including the 64 people who were on the plane. Now, joining the workers are FBI agents who are uh, looking for evidence uh, to support a criminal case. Officials are also looking for the black boxes from the American Airlines 757, the voice and data recorders. Uh, they hope that those uh, boxes, if they are found, will shed light on uh, how the hijacking occurred and whether the White House may have and his family next door. They'd all fled on Monday, but left behind valuable information, including Saudi airline documents and flight manuals. The parents will take us by the park and the dad will leave, us, leave the mom and while the dad goes to take his flight classes and then he'd come up about an hour later and pick us up. They took their classes at nearby flight schools. All over North America and Europe, the net tightened. In Boston, a car rented by two other pilots, Mohammed Atta and Marwan Yusuf al Shehi of the Arab Emirates, was impounded at the airport. Charlie Voss, who worked at a Florida pilot school where the two had taken lessons, put them up for a while. Uh, and they had no place to stay. They just popped in pretty much, uh, as I recall, unannounced. And uh, so we provided them uh, for the benefit of, of the flight school, uh, provided them a place to stay for a few days. Up to seven of the suspects had booked their tickets using the same credit card belonging to an associate who was picked up in a raid on a hotel in Boston. Authorities in Germany raided a house where the Bakaris had once lived, taking a woman in for questioning. Investigations are also underway in Canada, where some of the suspects are believed to have been based. By tonight, the FBI was claiming to have 2,000 leads and up to 50 suspects. They need to stay one step ahead of an angry American public, which has already begun targeting Islamic mosques in retribution. Greg Jennett, ABC News. For so many Australians, New York was the place to work, the pinnacle of a career. Now it looks like that the number of Australian victims of the attack is much greater than previously anticipated. The first confirmed fatalities became known today, but another 90 Australians are still unaccounted for. As time passes, anxiety rises amongst Australian families waiting to hear word of the missing. Confirmed dead, Alberto Dominguez of Sydney, a Qantas baggage handler who was on one of the suicide flights that struck the World Trade Centre. His wife Marta would have been on that flight too, but stayed in Boston to care for a sick relative. Also dead, a 62-year-old Sydney woman who was on the plane that crashed into the Pentagon. And an Australian man who has been reported killed at the World Trade Centre. The Prime Minister had warned Australians earlier in the day to prepare for the worst. We have to recognise that there could well have been a lot of Australians uh, working in the Trade Centre. There could well have been other Australians on the aircraft. In fact, there are reports from family and friends that another six Australians could have been on the suicide aircraft. And 84 Australians who were believed to be in or around the World Trade Centre are still missing. We are um, deeply concerned about the impact of these tragic events in America on the lives of Australians. This terrorist act against the United States has also been a terrorist act against Australia. The grieving has already begun for the family of Alberto Dominguez, who released this statement today. We never imagined the expressions of sympathy and grief we got from all corners of the world, for which we are very thankful in this difficult moment. It has been hard to put him to rest, when we see the tragedy being replayed time after time on TV. Australians still seeking information about the whereabouts of family in the United States are being urged to ring a Canberra hotline number 1800 0... But it never made it, crashing in an isolated field in western Pennsylvania. Calls from passengers to their loved ones hinted at what went on. There is because of the 45 degree angle of the structure, uh, they simply uh, can't go into the debris. So as a result, they have dropped these listening devices. And because 
Uh, unfortunately, they've heard uh, absolutely nothing on these listening devices. They are not very optimistic at all uh, that they're going to find anybody. And in fact, they believe the, uh, the death toll here at the Pentagon uh, will probably reach above 200. Uh, they've retrieved 80 bodies so far, bodies that apparently were in obvious places that didn't require much risk for some of the uh, recovery crews. Uh, but there were 64 passengers on the jetliner. And when you add that to the 150 military and civilian employees at the Pentagon who are uh, unaccounted for. Oklahoma, 1995. Two of America's worst terrorist attacks, and both times she walked away. Today I turned 24. Today? I really wanted to, you know, stamp my authority on the match, so, uh, yeah, then I just started seeing the ball like football, and, you know, I was just swinging at everything and everything that was going in. <laughs> And he'll need a similar performance if Australia is to have success against Sweden in the Davis Cup semi-final tie next week. I know all the boys are ready. They're already in Sydney practicing. So you know, as soon as I get there, I'm going to have to work my butt off to try and you know, get, in, get in good form again. And uh, yeah, we're probably still starting, you know, slight favourites, but we can't, uh, you know, take it easily at all because the Swedish team's got Enquist, Johansson, and uh, Jonas Bjorkman, who are very, you know, tough opponents. No rest for last year's U.S. Open champion Murray. About 5.30 this morning. While worried loved ones wait with nothing more than hope, rescue attempts are interrupted by another building threatening to collapse. The building's unstable. It's unstable. Jane Hansen with that report. Coming up tracking down the hijackers and the technology that may have helped them train for their deadly mission. This is the perfect opportunity to try that out as many times as you need so that you can hit that little building. Sets of remains and they used dogs. Uh, they called the dogs in and the dogs have been there for I'm sure quite some time. In fact, before I left, they actually retired the dogs. The, the dogs actually got very fatigued and um, they, they gave them the afternoon off, or the rest of the afternoon, which they certainly deserved. Um, and they, they helped pick up body sense and so A forth. site that has become rather familiar from disasters in which Americans have volunteered around the world, but not one I think Americans expect to see here. Just uh, everybody pitching in, you know, it's the, it's the buck, bucket brigade syndrome where guys just move stuff out, they move it to the outside. And, and it was really hard because even though this disaster only happened a day ago, um, these, these cadavers are starting to decompose and uh, it, it was hard. It was hard for everybody and it made everybody realize that it's only going to get worse in coming days. These guys work in teams, they'll investigate a nook, a cranny, they'll put their heads together and come up with a plan. And they're crawling under rather large slabs of, of plaster and concrete and, and metal. They don't seem very well protected. Well, that's, that's their job. They love it. They do it. There they are scaling up enormous pieces of, uh, of debris. And so as I was leaving, at about 5.15, everyone started running. A and sudden they, change of energy here. What's going on? Absolutely. They got a call on the phone on the, over the horn that the structure that uh, was adjacent to us was unstable and may come down. So I hit the record button and started running along with everyone. We took a, we took a breath here to you know, see if there was anything else going on. And then we suddenly heard this rumble, which you may hear on the tape, and it scared me to death. And that was it. We just bolted. The 60 pounds of gear I had on me weighed nothing. We just flew out of there, scared to death. Clearly a situation that is still dangerously unpredictable. All the glamour and the mythology surrounding the so-called masters... ...ordering that they be brought back to Australia. Bird's eye view, the full scale of the horror confronting New York's rescuers. Pakistani officials beg the Taliban to hand over bin Laden as those who can flee Afghanistan fearing the worst. Australia remembers 